Hello. I'm, I'm still setting up here, and uh, but that's okay. I'll, I'll, I'll show you what I've got here, and uh, I was just hooking up a few different boards. Uh, some of you may have seen the uh, the forum lately where I've had a logic analyzer that uses a serial terminal, and I just wanted to set this up here um, just to show you how I, I may go about it. I have two different platforms that I can show you at the moment. I have the uh, the, the P2 processor, the Parallax 8 core processor, and I also have the uh, RP2040 Pico. Uh, what I'll just do is I'll share this part of the screen. I'll see if I can get this set up right here. So um, just coming up off the other PC. Uh, terminal, oh, terminal's not bad. I'll just try to get a particular area here. Um, I've done this before, so I just have to find this again. Um, okay. Uh, we can share one part of the screen. That's the advanced part, is it? Uh, here we go, portion of the screen. Okay, very good. Uh, hold control. Okay. And what do we do now? Share and, all right, so what I'll just do, I'll just get this first. And hopefully- Yeah, we see it. Yes, that's the one. And what I should do, I'll drag it across to this one over here. Uh, let's see. All right. I should see that. I'll bring that down a bit more. And I'll leave it as it is. Yes, that will do. Okay. All right. So we've got that. So, oh, that's not the screen, is it? Um, okay. I haven't seen it update yet. So what I'll do is I'll just bring that back across again. Um, change it over. I don't know what it's doing at the moment. So, okay, how are we going? Is that changing? I can't see it changing up here. I'm not quite sure what it's doing at the moment. Uh, just stop the share for the moment and do that again. Excuse me for the moment. Uh, share the screen. Advanced portion of the screen and share now. Yeah. comes up in the same spot and yeah, what have I got? Okay, all right, that's fair enough. We'll do that one. All right, so we've got a uh, terminal screen up here. You can see that well enough. And we have um, another terminal screen I'll bring across. That just means I can swap this around quite easily. All right, so this one is a P2 terminal screen at the moment. Uh, uh, I have all these different modules, as you can see, up here loaded up. I have these the logic analyzer module loaded up in this one as well. So what I'm going to do is I'll just do a quick words just so you can see what's up there. And then we're going to go in and run splat. And I'm just making sure this is coming up here. Yes, there we go. Uh, I haven't updated this one. The Pico one is the one I've been updating. This should go wider, but it's not. So I'll jump back up into the console and I'll just set up the, the width at the moment like this and resume. Unfortunately, yes, but tiny minor uh, problem. So at the moment, you see down the bottom, this logic analyzer is set up for a scale of six nanosecond samples. And we can move along those samples, etc. cetera. Uh, and what I've done is I've hooked up one of these uh, little, I don't have a spare one here, but one of those little rotary encoders, I've hooked that up to 24, 25, 26. I'm not even sure what pins are what on there at the moment, but I can see some activity coming up on there. So uh, what I'm going to do is change the channels, uh, narrow this down a little bit and drop this down to um, channels 24 uh, through to 31. We can see these parameters coming up down the bottom of the screen down here, um, down here, and set that to the channels. And that way I'm just... This, these are the channels of interest at the moment. Uh, just to, yes, so that should be fine. And I think if I tell it to run, I'm not sure if I've got this set up right, but I'll just tell it to run. It should, yes, it's indicating activity. Obviously, it's going way too fast. So let's stop that. Oh, I didn't mean to jump to the console, but I'll resume again. And what I'm going to do now is change the time base. Let's change that to 100 microseconds. So there we go. Tell it to run continuously. Um, and it's still too fast. So let's drop that back to 
I've done it again, uh, one millisecond and tell it to run continuously. See if we can get anything out of it. So what we're trying to do here is use forth, um, you know, we use forth to debug hardware. Many times we have the logic analyzer and the oscilloscope hooked up as well. Uh, 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 we, we don't always have the luxury of having that, that equipment here. Um, and some, some of you might not have this equipment. So here you can have it, <laughs> just load it onto your fourth board uh, and a serial terminal. Now, what we're going to do is just tell that to run continually and see if we can get this to talk to us. For some reason, I'm doing something very wrong here at the moment. So uh, just resume and I'll change the time base to 500 microseconds, run continuously. The upper left-hand corners has two, um, the, the, the actual trigger up here uh, and Yes, something's happening there now. Okay, so I'm pressing the button, pressing the button. Uh, this is supposed to have um, pull ups on it, I think. But obviously, yes, I I'm still going way too fast. So I should trigger on this one. And unfortunately, I haven't updated this one. <laughs> it hasn't, hasn't got the trigger set up properly on it. So what I'm going to do is just show you the, the Pico one and see if I can do something with this Pico as well. So. What I'll, I'll do is I'll plug that across here to the Pico. I have a little Pico board up on here. That's actually just uh, hiding underneath the display here. And so what I'm going to do is just talk to this board at the moment. And it's running Necrisp. Uh, I have my Tachyon extensions on there. I still haven't gotten around to writing Tachyon for, for, for this one yet. But uh, over here on my, uh, on my Visual Studio code, I'll just tell that to load in Splat. All right. And we can leave the terminal open. This is a good thing. You know, we can, um, on Linux, we can have the terminal open and we can still load into it at the same time. So rather than backing that up, um, I have that hooked up to a control key. I'll just tell that to run there. So you can see that okay. I'll bring that up a bit larger and a bit larger again, maybe, and even drop down the number of channels on there. Perhaps too large for the screen here at the moment. So I'll drop this back without adjusting that. Uh, what do you see there now? It's just mainly, well, rubbish really, but uh, I'm going to tell this to do a, a, a stimulate uh, the outputs on here with different pulse width modulations, you know, different rates and different um, duty cycles uh, because the, the Pico, the RP2040 has uh, many channels where we can configure. So I told it to, to run this little STEM program and I'll, I'll resume, control R will do, resume and tell it to trigger just on anything. And we can see the output there now. And up the very top, you notice we even have the uh, labels up here for uh, UART, et cetera. Um, the different pin functions that the RP2040 is configured to, any labels on the right hand side that I may give it, I can just add labels manually or from a file. And we can see the waveform from there. But we can make that wider as well, 120 wide, perhaps too wide for this screen at the moment. I'll leave it at that. Uh, increase the terminal width, make it 120 wide again. Uh, there we go. All right, so we can scroll through there. Um, many different things we can do, etc. And stop that take it back home again, move the cursor along. Uh, we can even configure this uh, terminal up for um, decoding a asynchronous serial. I, I, I have different protocol encoders I can build into it. But if I say that's some um, 921 600 uh, board, it will now configure the time base for that. So if I capture anything, but see the very top trace up there is actually decoding, we see an FA there, it's decoded. Uh, and I'm not saying this is totally perfect, a five, etc. So it's just decoding all, all that information up there. I, I'm gonna make it better than that, of course, but it's just a useful little tool for me at the moment. And swapping back to the, the normal time base, uh, I'll trigger this again, and we can see that we have the different pulse widths there. Why don't we get another one here? We have one full servo at the moment up on 
20 on, what is it, uh, 21, this one down here. So I'm going to just, uh, there's nothing much on there at the moment. So I'm just going to tell this one to uh, do a 50% cycle. I'm trying to think what my, uh, just a moment, I'll just double check what my syntax is for this. Uh, I have one where I can set up the frequency and everything on there. So uh, I'll tell it that I want a 50% cycle at 50 out of 100 down here. And also uh, what frequency I want, make it 100 kilohertz. All right, and which pin? Well, why don't we make another pin? We'll make it pin, pin 22. So it's seeing we're down there now, pin 22. And that's PWM hertz, correct. Now, when I resume, I can just do control R, trigger that. We can see that we have a new waveform down there on, on this channel down here. And that is the, let's give it a label. This is our de demo on 22. So let's go back. Um, and 22, it has a label called uh, demo. All right, and then resume. And there we are, there's a label up there, demo. And so this is a 100 kilohertz, 50% 50, 50 duty cycle. We're going to drop that duty cycle back down again now. Um, I'll have to drop out to do this uh, and 100. And um, what I'm going to do is yeah, maintain the same frequency and on that same pin. So PWM hertz and resume. And so we can see the duty cycle has changed. So this is very useful. Um, you can use it to, to debug the, the signals coming in and out of the processor itself or use it on another processor. The Pico modules are very cheap and you can use that to debug your ESP32 signals and so on. Um, uh, unfortunately, I didn't have that encoder set up very well. I don't know how I'm going for time. Uh, so I'm just trying to just show you a couple of little things like this where I can use the logic analyzer itself to, to debug the signals. So it, uh, when I have a servo signal, for instance, I want to be able to maintain a certain um, duty, duty cycle. I uh, can't remember the actual refresh rates, et cetera. And I don't need the scope. I, the, the terminal is the scope here. Uh, this one isn't calibrated at the moment. So it says 16 nanoseconds, but it's on a slow capture. It's 144 nanosecond sample time. Uh, I think I can make it 10 times faster. I just haven't done that quite yet on this one for the, for the Pico. But we can certainly see the serial traffic coming through up in the top on the UART and all the different signals there. So that makes it very handy. If we had video signals coming through as well, um, we'd see that too. In fact, the P2, um, on the P2, the trouble with the P2 is it has 64 IO pins and each of those pins are smart pins. And you can configure, it's like a peripheral in a pin. But the only trouble is, one tiny little problem is that I can't read that pin with the same pin when it's in a smart pin mode. So what I'm doing on the Pico, I can't show you on the P2 unless I echo them back into other inputs, unfortunately. But, uh, but otherwise it's very fast as you could see. And, and because it has eight cores, uh, I can dedicate a core just to totally capturing everything, triggering and so on, and, and still be totally interactive in another core without any slowdown at all. Uh, you can see that back in here. I've brought this one back up again now and we have um, I think I mentioned in there that I have all these calls running in there um, how fast was it again I'll just run that again from start uh, resume resume okay and increase the number of channels 0 to 31 or from uh, 32 to 63 so we have 64 channels we can be capturing. And I'm telling that to run at the moment, but yes. So it's taking a while. I have a large sample buffer, so it's taking a while to fill up that buffer, obviously. Uh, let's bring that back to that little decoder that I hooked in before, see if I can capture it now. So I'll go back. This was on pin uh, 24. 
24 uh, and 31. I'll just drop this back down again. And let's slow this right down. Uh, let's go two millisecond time base. So we see that down there, 2000, for some reason I have an extra 0.2 microsecond there. And so that's the actual time, uh, scale for per sample. I tell that to run continuously and you may not see it because it's such a large sample. So I might have to actually change that. But I'll just keep turning this encoder around and see what we get out of it. Not good. Okay. Right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to do something different now. I'm going to tell it to trigger on, I think it's pin 20. Uh, try, this, try this like this. Obviously, I have to add more controls for this really slow capture mode, but that's taking way too long. So, Peter, how similar are, or how similar or different are the uh, uh, P2 and Pico implementations? Uh, no, the, 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 the Pico one was borrowed from the P2, which was borrowed from the P1. I've added a few extras to the to the Pico, a few nice little things. I still have to go back to the P2 version and put in all the triggers, et cetera, in there, like I did on, on the Pico. So the Pico is quite nicely set up, um, but the P2 has a lot of power because of the multiple cores. So, um, and and there's a, I, I, I really only did this about a year ago, the one for the P2, because the P1 was done back in 2015. I first did that and it proved to be very useful at the time. It's certainly very useful out in the field when I don't have all the equipment with me and uh, I, I'm, I can just hook it up like that very quickly. The, uh, the, the other thing too is that, uh, you know, it would be nice to do analog, but I haven't quite figured out how to get ASCII characters to, to show me the wavy lines, you know, <laughs> in a nice manner anyway. But I'd like to be able to do that. Pico has some A to D channels. I can use that, for instance. So that would be really nice. Mm. Um, unfortunately, I'm not really. I had some other technical difficulties here before, and I haven't quite set up the demo the way I wanted. But if we have time later, maybe I can just come back to it. I'll have it set up and just show you very, very nicely uh, how it all works and 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 how we can write a little decoder, for instance, in 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 minutes really, just, for, just by seeing the signals and working that out. Any questions? Peter, this was amazing. And uh, my question is, um, are you going to share the code uh, for the Pico? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yes, uh, obviously it's all my Dropbox and my PCloud folder and I've, I've posted the links before for it. Uh, I can post them again, but you know, they, they, they're always the, I have the, the Dropbox, which is, uh, I, I work from that. And that is my bleeding edge software. When I think it's stable, I copy it up to the pCloud folder and up to SourceForge, et cetera. Be, so I have- be, because, because I see this is very useful for Francois Laguel, who is mm -hmm. uh, an expert in designing um, uh, um, uh, single board computers and retro yes. retro computers are also very useful for Jean Lagevat, who who is designing a simulator MC six thousand sixty eight oo, and many other friends. And also Jason will be very happy to uh, to put this to work for for his developments. This is very very useful. Mm. Yes, and um, that, that certainly um, yeah. It's straight away. Any anybody can use it really. It's it just it's it's very easy to adapt. I adapt it back to the Mikris Tachyon type uh, mm -hmm. version, mm -hmm. um, so we can adapt it to any version. Uh, and it's very straightforward. Three sections. You have the ANSI. If you don't have it already, just the standard stuff to draw ANSI in colors and positioning. Uh, the other part that does does the capture, and another part. Oh, yeah, and the display and, and also the configuration. So 